So today we're starting a brand new series on the D4A channel. And in this series, we're gonna take one iconic engine and we're gonna cover everything that makes it great. And basically everything you need to know about it. So we're gonna talk about its history and development, its technical specs and engineering, as well as its tuning potential and a lot more. So what engine better to start with than the 4AGE I know, love and own. So the 4AGE started its life in 1983 and it was produced all the way until 1998. So it was on the market for a fairly long time and during its 15 year production run it received uh, numerous evolutions and got a bit better every time. These evolutions would usually occur in parallel with new Toyota models or facelifts of existing models as is often the case in the auto industry. So what does 4AGE even stand for? No, it doesn't stand for I was waiting for ages to get to 60 miles per hour. Toyota actually has this really nice and convenient uh, engine naming system where one number and a few letters can tell you a lot about an engine. So 4AGE actually stands for the fourth revision of the A block. G is performance cylinder head and E is electronic fuel injection. Now the A series of Toyota engines, which the 4AGE is a part of, started in 1978 with the 1A series and ended with the 8A series in 2006. If you're a 4AGE or lunatic, you're probably now wondering what about the 9AGE or the 7AGE? Those were not Toyota factory engines, there's something else, but don't worry, we will be talking more about them later on in the video. When it comes to the 4A uh, family of engines, the first members of the 4A series were far less impressive and performance oriented than the 4AGE. The first member of the 4A series being the 4AC, which was a single camshaft, eight valve, carbureted engine that only put out around 70 horsepower. The next step in the 4A series was the 4A FE, which brought dual camshafts and electronic fuel injection to the table. The next logical step in the 4A series was of course the 4A GE, which unlike the 4A FE was a performance oriented engine and came as a performance option in the Toyota Corolla, the Celica, the MR2 and some other mid-sized Toyota vehicles of the time. Interestingly enough, you can also find the 4AGE in the Geo Prism and the Chevrolet Nova, which are basically just rebadged versions of the Toyota Corolla AE92. When it comes to the power output, the 4AGE started its life with 112 horsepower in its first generation and ended with 165 horsepower in its last generation. Toyota developed the 4AGE engine as a replacement for its 2TG engine, which is another 1.6 uh, engineering little gem uh, in its own right. When it comes to the 4AGE's successor, the technical successor to the 4AGE is the totally non-noteworthy 3ZZ engine, which is why many Toyota fans see the much more exciting 2ZZ GE Toyota engine as the spiritual successor to the 4AGE. The 4AGE can also brag about playing a key role in a badly drawn anime filled with some of the most drawn out and boring dialogues known to man. That's why you're beating yourself up. I am of course talking about Dragon Ball Z, a anime about a bunch of supernatural dudes with erupting blonde hair that tune a 4AGE and try and eventually succeed to get it to go over 9000 RPM. It's over 9000! Yeah, of course, the anime is Initial D, we all know that, it's not Dragon Ball Z. And fortunately, its racing scenes are better than its dialogue. And uh, no other engine can brag about playing such an important role in an anime. 
Okay, almost no other engine can brag about playing such an important role in anime. Initial D did succeed in doing something remarkable. It succeeded in blowing uh, the 4AGE's popularity and perceived capabilities out of proportion. It's a good engine, but it's not as good as an Initial D fanboy might try to convince you that it is. There's a really important engine that the 4AGE has a lot in common with, but it's not a Toyota engine. It's actually an engine made by a British company called Cosworth. Uh, if you don't know who they are, uh, Google them. They made some of the greatest engines known to man. Now, the Cosworth engine that the 4AGE has a lot in common with is called the Cosworth BDA. Now, Cosworth has a much simpler naming system than Toyota, and BDA simply stands for Belt Drive A-Type. And it's one of the first racing and production engines to have both of its cam gears driven by a rubber tooted belt. The 4AGE is also Toyota's first ever engine to have both of its cam gears driven by a rubber tooted belt. Coincidence? I think not. But the similarities do not end there. Here are the sizes of the intake and exhaust valves for the Cosworth BDA. And here are the sizes for the intake and exhaust valves for the Toyota 4AGE. Also, here's the bore and stroke uh, for the BDA, and here's the bore and stroke for the 4AGE. So basically, as you can see, the 4AGE is pretty much a mass-produced version of a racing engine, which I guess makes it pretty cool. Now, the Cosworth BDA uh, is a full-fledged race engine uh, originally designed in 1969 by a dude called Mike Hall. The original purpose of the engine was for it to be a homologation engine for the Ford Escort RS1600. One of the 4AGE's greatest claims to fame is that it was the official engine of the Formula Atlantic Racing Series. There, alongside with a variation of the BDA called the BDD, the 4AGE would, in full racing trim and naturally aspirated form, produce around 240 horsepower at some 9 to 10,000 RPM. <laughs> This was a truly special engine and many see the Formula Atlantic 4AGE as the holy grail of the 4AGE engine. And even today Formula Atlantic 4AGE racing parts are rare, expensive and very sought after. However, starting with 2006, both the BDD and the 4AGE have been largely replaced by a new engine the Formula Atlantic Racing Series called the Cosworth Mazda MZR. So continuing with the specs, as we have seen the 4AGE is a pretty over square design. Over square meaning that its bore is larger than its stroke and that means the 4AGE is capable of handling high RPMs pretty well and even in its stock factory form the 4AGE is known to be able to handle high RPM abuse pretty well. And a big cylinder bore also means that you can stuff some pretty big valves in your combustion chamber. And even in its 16 valve form, the 4AGE has some healthy valve sizes and flows pretty well. It breeds nicely. And of course, the 20 valve version breeds even better. Now, when it comes to the different generations of the 4AGE, I do not want to make this video overly long and boring, so I'm going to list all the generations and all the differences between them and their individual specs right here at this point of the video for your reference, so you can pause the video or you can come back to this point later on in case you need to check something again. The engine block of the 4AGE is cast iron. That of course means it's a bit heavier than aluminum blocks, but it also means that it's tough and it's able to handle abuse and even boost pretty well. The engine block is a good design and the cylinders have been Siamese, which means that it's short because it was originally designed to fit in tight 
engine base of small and mid-sized Toyotas. Inside the cast iron uh, engine block we can find five main bearings, a very reliable and well-designed fully counterweight forged steel crankshaft and some cast uh, pistons and some cast conrods. Both the oiling and the cooling system of the 4AGE are well designed and will not go wrong when maintained properly. The cylinder head of the 4AGE has been developed by Yamaha as have been many other Toyota's performance cylinder heads. As a general rule of thumb, if a Toyota engine has a G in its name, then its cylinder head was developed by Yamaha. The cylinder head uses a bearingless design, which means that you cannot change camshaft bearings on a Toyota 4AGE, which can be both good and bad. The cylinder head also uses a shim over bucket design placed on its valves and valve springs. This is a good design and when it comes to adjusting valve lash on your 4AGE, it's actually a lot easier to do than on many other twin cam engines because to adjust valve lash you do not need to remove your camshafts and that is very nice and considerate and user friendly of Toyota. Thank you Toyota. The combustion chambers are also a pretty good closed design with some very nice squish areas. Okay, now we're getting to the fun stuff, tuning. When it comes to tuning the 4AGE, the 4AGE has been around for more than three decades and pretty much everything possible has been done to it. From crazy high revving Formula Atlantic wannabe builds, to turbos, to twin charging, to carburetor conversions, you name it, somebody has done it. And the 4AGE is a good engine. And while there are some engines from the same era that may have a engineering and performance edge over the 4AGE, the 4AGE is still capable, it's still a good tuning platform and it is very reliable. And it also has some of its undeniable charms. And also it is perhaps one of the best sounding four cylinders ever made. <laughs> start tuning the 4AGE and let's assume that as a starting point in our little virtual tuning adventure we're gonna keep the 4AGE naturally aspirated. And what is stage one on a naturally aspirated 4AGE engine? Well it's the usual stuff, maybe a cold air intake, maybe some headers, uh, maybe some cams or even cam gears if you're a bit more ambitious stage one and that's all gonna give you a net gain of 0.6 horsepower. <laughs> I'm joking of course, but uh, let's face it, uh, by today's standards the 4AGE is a small and underpowered engine. It's a 1.6 liter four-cylinder with pretty poor torque in the low RPMs and it really works best only in small and light cars. And that's cool, I'm a totally a firm believer in driver capabilities and squeezing out the most of a underpowered rev happy engine. And that is a true joy in the 4AGE. Even in stock factory form, it is a fun engine to drive. But if you want big power from the 4AGE, you're gonna need to do some pretty big things. And you won't make big power with the 4AGE until you actually take it out of the car and seriously mod it. That being said, for the first stage for light modding, the 4AGE small port head, which has small ports, uh, is actually better than the big port head. But later on in the game, when you want big power gains, the big port head is the one to go for. Now the next step in the naturally aspirated tuning scenario is gonna involve some more serious parts. You're gonna have to get some individual throttle bodies, more aggressive cams, aftermarket standalone engine management, probably do some porting and polishing of the cylinder head and increase your compression via using different pistons or shaving your head. And all of this, if you do it right and if you have the knowledge to do it right, is gonna give you some maybe 160 to 180 horsepower. 
And this is honestly a sort of a common sense limit of the naturally aspirated for a GE. If you want to go beyond 180 horsepower with a 4A GE in naturally aspirated form, it's going to become really, really expensive and pretty complicated from that point onward. And every horsepower, uh, you know, every single horsepower is going to be a little war in its own right. You're going to need stuff, you know, like a dry sump setup. You're going to need to change your uh, shim under bucket to a shim over bucket. You're going to need some crazy high lift and crazy aggressive camshafts. You're going to need a totally different setup when it comes to the crankshaft, conrods, pistons. And you can, as you can see, it all piles up and you will still struggle to make, you know, 200 to 220, 230 horsepower with a naturally aspirated 4 GE is a serious accomplishment and it takes a lot of knowledge and effort and uh, it is going to cost a lot more money. So from a, you know, bang for buck perspective, uh, some more modern naturally aspirated engines are a much better starting point for high naturally aspirated power. But still, if you want to do it, do it. It's an you know amazing endeavor. It's it's gonna sound crazy, and many people say that you know a properly done high power, high revving naturally aspirated 4AG you know is one of life's greatest pleasures. <laughs> So making big power in naturally aspirated form with the 4AGE isn't easy. So how do we make big power with the 4AGE? Forced induction, of course. And the first step in the forced induction career path and the easiest one is to simply find a factory 4AGZE engine which is supercharged and you can increase the boost by simply changing a pulley on the 4AGZE and you can stuff it in a lightweight Toyota and you're gonna have a really nice fun package that isn't going to disappoint you on the street ever. It might be enough for the vast majority of people, the 4AGZE has a lot more torque than the 4AGE, of course, and it's really, really fun in a lightweight car. But let's imagine you're even more power hungry than that and you want even bigger power from the 4AGE. How do we do that? Snails, of course. Snails are the answer. Yes, turbos. The 4AGE has a cast iron block and it's pretty good at handling turbos and Dozens upon dozens, probably hundreds upon hundreds of 4AGEs have been built in turbo mode over the years. Now, if you're lazy, you can slap a turbo on a bone stock 4AGE, keep the boost low, and it's gonna work for a while. If you want serious turbo power, you're of course going to need to swap the stock cast pistons and conrods for some forged ones. Of course, these do not come cheap, but the 7 rib 4AGE block is a pretty sturdy cast iron block that has proven itself at handling quite a bit of boost. So with a modern turbo and the right engine internals, 350 to 400 horsepower becomes really realistic from a 4AGE engine. But even a cheaper setup uh, with a older turbo and savings in other areas can still manage pretty easily 250 to 300 horsepower. Remember how we said that the A series of Toyota engines had multiple generations? Well, an important one is the 7A FE. This was a 1.8 liter Toyota engine that had the same bore as the 4AGE, but a larger stroke and a good way of getting more torque for the 4AGE in both naturally aspirated and forced induction forms is to get a 7A block and take a 4AGE head and slap it onto that block. But if you want even more torque, if you want even more power potential, then you can build something called a 9AG. Now this is a pretty weird engine name because the A series doesn't even have a 9A in it, uh, it ends with the 8A. But the 9AGE is a total Frankenstein of an engine that boosts the 4AGE's displacement to 1.9 liters and has some serious power potential, especially if you use a 20 valve head. Now the 20 valve 4AGE cylinder head isn't just better because it has more valves, it's also better because it has a better intake port angle. 
Now this is one of the main disadvantages of the 16 valve head when you're aiming for big power. The 16 valve head has a pretty outdated wide valve encoded angle. Back in the 80s, this was considered to be optimal for performance, but already in the 90s, the engineers started abandoning this design in favor of a more narrow valve encoded angle. And as you can see already in the 90s with the 20 valve, Toyota started fixing this. So if you're a deranged person and 400 to 500 horsepower from a 4AGE isn't enough, you're gonna want to build a 9AGE. And mind you, it isn't gonna be simple and it isn't gonna be cheap either. But if you want 1000 horsepower from a 4AGE, then you're gonna need a 9AGE. If you're interested in building a crazy 9AGE, then a company called MRP, which stands for Man on Racing Products in New Zealand, is a sort of a 4AGE mecca and they can build you a seriously crazy 9AGE or any sort of other 4AGE variation for that matter. Uh, the 9AGE turbo uh, won't be cheap, but it will be insane. So to sum it up, the 4AG is a good, small, reliable performance engine. It works great as a swap in older Toyotas and actually into any lightweight vehicle for that matter. So the 4AG is a fun engine to drive even in its stock form, but it's also a bit outdated. And if you want big power, uh, squeezing out these power figures from a 4AG is gonna require more money and effort than squeezing out the same amount of power from a more modern iconic engine, such as, for example, the 2ZZ GE or the Honda K series. In the lower power levels, the 4AG is beginner friendly and it's easy to work on it and to tune it. It's also still a relatively plentiful engine, so it's pretty easy to source and cheap to buy. The sound that it makes, that's the icing on the cake. So that's pretty much it when it comes to this iconic engines video that covered the 4AGE engine and everything that makes it great. What do you think about the 4AGE engine? Tell me in the comments section. Did I forget something about the 4AGE engine? Tell me in the comments section. What engine should we do next in the iconic engine series? You guessed it. Tell me in the comments section. So that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll leave you with some cool sounds of my very own 4AGE.